So beyond the debate on centralized and decentralized, I think we don't have to tell about you know, what is good or what is bad. Let's think about whether things can be done at the local level. Huh? So if you want to plan decentralized systems at the local level, these are the elements that you may need. Huh? One is you need to understand the flow of wastewater at micro level. You know, in a European city, you have the natural streams, you have the sewers, that is the storm, storm drainage, you know, when rain comes and all it has to go through. And the third one is sewer, that is your wastewater. These three streams are there. But if you look at Alepi, all this becomes one during rain. And that is the problem with all most of our towns. Huh? So first thing is to understand the flow of wastewater through a town. That is the first, first challenge. The second challenge is, it is not only the wastewater, you know. If you want to understand who is producing this wastewater, it is the society that is producing the wastewater. So we, we need to understand the socio-economic situation in a town. Then I, you will understand that there are slums, there are multi-storied buildings and then there are, you know, um, very sparse settlements. There are commercial areas, you know, so there are different types of settlements within a town. There can be different clusters. There are very elite regions where, where, there, are, where, where there are poor people living. So a town is a physical, physiology, physically it's different, socioeconomically also it's different. So if you overlay your physical parameters over your socioeconomic, you get something called sanitation zone. Because the solutions may be very different, what you mean. The ability to pay, for example, willingness to pay, ability to pay, all this may be different. So you can have, so who, who is to be given subsidy? Then we don't have to think about a town level, we can easily tell that this is the wards that should get the subsidy. Or within these wards, these are the households who get subsidy. So that is the beauty of getting into a socio-economic survey to understand the physical. Then what could, good, what could be the technologies that are needed for these different types of waste producers from a household level to a community level to an industry or you know to a multi-story. What is the kind of technology that you need and then we, which are the treatment locations you know that I will come to that. Then you need widespread consultations because how can you take a decision as a kind of an academic body you know. You need urban local body members, you need local politicians, you need NGOs, you know, residents associations, all this may be needed. So you need a participatory situational analysis. So who will do that? We will say that civil society will do it. But who is a civil society? It may be an N. I don't see any civil society here. We are all civil, but there is no society. So what we are trying to do is to make academic institutions a new civil society huh? and you don't have a ready-made citizen as in Europe who will actually kind of tell about these are my rights and I were because that from French Revolution there is a 200 years of democratization that's happened in those societies so we may not have ready-made citizens here but we have very educated minority which are in these academic institutions which got this huge, huge kind of a blessing to get into tertiary education. Who has to be made responsible because you have belonged to 4%, 5% of this big country. Huh? So those can be citizens. At least those people have to be citizens because they, at, at the end of the day, even if you are paying, you know, you are being publicly funded in many ways. So you have a responsibility also to be citizens. So can we make a student citizen is the question. Who can analyze problems at the local level and who can demand issues also. So then our model starts with finding out a, an engineering college, a arts and science college in the locality who can then do this analysis of the citizen which needs then consultation with ULB and things like that. So 
we started with two towns. We started with Alibag as a town. Um, Alibag in Maharashtra and Nedumangad in Kerala. These are the two initial towns where they started with. We collected the secondary data about demography, urban finance, there was this Maharashtra, uh, uh, what MSNA Paresh, Maharashtra, Sujal Nirban Abhiyan, which, which had a lot of data. And then um, we had participatory appraisal, we involved lo local colleges, they collected primary data and continued conversation with the ULB personnel. We had a questionnaire survey about domestic water sources of sources, usage, access, grey and black water generation and disposal methods. These, these were part of our questionnaire. We had discussions with the interviews, we had drain maps made. Uh, Let us see what those are. So this is the drain mapping, this is the first level. Hmm? So first we look at flows. So it could be, so a watershed, everybody knows a watershed. A watershed actually tells about the kind of flow of water, natural streams. And a watershed is a unit where the water gets out through one point. So if you look at the, you know, kind of map all the catchment of this, this, you know, kind of, you know, um, the, the, the let out point, you get that's called a watershed. So watershed is a natural unit in 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 a in a slopey terrain. But then wastewater also flows through that, for which we construct drains. So it can be it can be sewers or it can be stormwater drains. So if we map these drains also, then what we get is something called a waste watershed. So it is watersheds and wastewater also flowing in. So together it becomes a complete flow of wastewater sheds. So that is the first level of a physical boundary that we are trying to do, which actually gives us some polygons where water is kind of flowing. So these are physical units that we have. So it is topography, natural drainage, constructed drainage and this gives us a wastewater shed. And then comes uh, something called sanitation zones. So we overlay the socio-economic details and then we get a sanitation zone. Huh? So for example, these are the kind of coastal pockets where you know there were mostly coli fishermen who were actually uh, kind of there. And this zone was mostly government buildings, so it was sparsely occupied and things like that. And and these were where the multi-storied and you know things. So you have certain kinds of zones over these physical boundaries when you look at the socio-economic also. And, and then if you look at this, you know, we can see that there are kind of natural, natural drainage points also here. So we found that, you know, actually the Alibag water comes into either ponds or wetlands. At the end of the drain, you have those things. So can we make, you know, kind of systems there and can we make better systems from the households? That's the question that we asked. So these are the treatment locations we identified, which could actually be the kind of, you know, decentralized locations. But you need to kind of make the house, household systems also. So what are the challenges? One, integrating the spatial and socioeconomic data so one, there is a physical boundary of a watershed, then there is a political boundary of a ward, ward or district and you know, so there could be mismatch between these two, so how do you make planning? Then you know, exact volume of water is tough in India, we have various sources, especially how do you compute groundwater? You have water authority, public utility water coming in, but then you complement that with groundwater also. You know, so that is one major challenge. Um, then, uh, it slopes with negligible gradient like Alapi. How do you develop a watershed? So we here we develop something called canal sheds, which I'll come to you later. Then demystifying mapping with accuracy. That also I'll tell you how we did it. You know, we identified. Uh, you know, we had some tricks to kind of do that. 
and then capacitation of academic institutions, incorporation of this heterodox technology models in curriculum, you know, which actually is the next step that we are trying to do. Otherwise, environmental engineering has only very conventional technologies in hand. So, local expertise, local service producers or construction maintenance, you know, these could be the kind of challenges that we have. Institutional challenges, you know, if it is one STP, it can be regulated very easily. But if it is, you know, kind of thousand units, who is going to regulate it? And how do you kind of ensure compliance? Septage management, you know, then participation in a campaign mode is very easy. We found that, you know, 300 people could be brought together for a campaign of a summer school. But then how do you make it into a plan, into a programmatic thing? There we needed our nine dear planners who are actually helping us. It needs a lot of motivation, it needs a lot of patience to kind of get to that stage. Um, yeah, I think this, all this will tell you. You know, the one thing is, you know, how can you make green tech technicians? There could be thousand biogas plants. We will say that it is a big burden, but at another level, this may be 10 jobs of maintenance of those things, which are actually green jobs. <coughs> in, a, in, a, in, in an economy which is growing without jobs, these could be possibilities. Hmm? So, this is the major problem, buy-in of the political class. Fortunately, in ILP we got that. So, that is why after the two, two towns, two small towns, we came to Alapi because we had the political buy-in here. Huh? And then the story is a different story. Yeah, this is the exercise. One is, you know, is all the, plan, is all the steps in planning process clear? Mapping of waste watersheds, socio-economic survey, arriving at sanitation zones. No problem if it is clear also, because this is what we are going to do in the rest of the days. These three aspects keep it in mind. How is, you know, how did, how did we map the physical, how did we map the socio-economic and how did we arrive at, you know, zones, zoning, that is the first thing. Important, make sure that all participants in your groups has understood this exercise. Please discuss among yourself today itself whether this is clear, these steps. This is the foundation of integrated sanitation planning that is key to this winter school. Um, you know, so this is our experience from winter, co winter school 2017 to winter school 2018, what we have done. And Alapi, as all of you know, is in south of Cochin. And it is, you know, it is actually a narrow strip of land between the Arabian Sea and the Vembanad Lake. And in the Vembanad Lake, we have four major rivers draining into the Vembanad Lake. Vembanad Lake, you can actually see from here if you go into the terrace. And then on the other side is the, is the uh, uh, sea, Arabian Sea. And it is a three to four kilometer stretch of, you know, land is where we, we, we have it here. Uh, you know, because of these four rivers which came to Vembanad Lake and there was a very vibrant port here. So, in 1759, this port and Alapi town was developed as a one of the first, you know, planned towns. You can see the square roads and the big, you know. So, this is the canal in front is one of these canals that we have. Huh? So, these two major canals connect uh, Vembanad Lake to the Arabian Sea. And this is because this, this was a, a spices used to come through these uh, rivers and for the transportation of that to the ports, that is why these canals were made. And then we had an intricate network of canals to kind of, you know, because it is a wholly it is a wetland. So, to drain it off, we had a network of canals which actually drain into the major canals and then, uh, so this is twin purpose, one was the drainage. Second was, it was the hub of transportation. People used it for, you know, bathing, washing, 
all the you know kind of water needs other than drinking people used to kind of have it from these lakes uh, this uh, this canals 